I want to basically give you an open mic to respond to what you heard today in the Supreme Court. But begin, if you will, with this one point. Is this the first time, it's the first time I remember uh, hearing an argument in the Supreme Court about taking a right away from people? You're right, Lawrence. If the Supreme Court does what I think it is absolutely certain now that it will do, and that is whether it calls it overruling Roe v. Wade or not, getting rid of the fundamental right to abortion until viability. When it does that, it will be the first time in our nation's history that we have turned things backwards in terms of rights. All along, we have expanded rights. Brown v. Board expanded rights beyond what Plessy had said. Lawrence v. Texas expanded rights for LGBT people. We've expanded. But if we do what the court now is poised to do, it will be the first turnaround. We will have lost our virginity, basically. And once we do it this time, it's going to be a lot easier to do it next time with contraception, with same-sex marriage, with gun rights, for example, rights that conservatives like, rights that liberals like. It's always been a matter of expanding rights. This will be the first reversal of that trend. But that's not only uh, and not the only first it'll be. It will also be the first time that the Supreme Court, since Dred Scott in 1857, took the position that when there are rights on both sides, you know, back in 1857, they thought that slave owners had rights. But we could have a nation half slave and half free. We could just let each state decide for itself. The position that Brett Kavanaugh, Justice Kavanaugh took in today's argument was that if we are scrupulously neutral, instead of resolving a conflict between important rights, the woman's right to liberty and bodily integrity and a possible right on the part of the unborn to survive, we will be scrupulously neutral between those rights, not by developing a constitutional line like viability, not by having a nationwide constitutional amendment the way we did in the 14th Amendment, to finally make former slaves full citizens of the country, but by letting each state vote, by majority vote in that state, whether fetuses will be protected or women will be protected. And there's a third first that I think is extremely important. You ended with the quotation from Justice Sotomayor asking whether the institution of the Supreme Court can preserve its legitimacy, continue its important role in our country. If the stench on that court is so visible and evident as it will be when nothing but the composition of the court has changed, nothing else has changed in the 30 years since Casey, and really in the 50 years since Roe, nothing constitutionally relevant. It's just that there are some new faces there. Now, important as the institutional legitimacy of the court is, and I think it's important, even more important, even more fundamental is the question, will we have a legitimate form of law if we have a nation in which half the citizens Half the citizens have less than full rights. We men have the right to control our bodies. We have a court that says bodily integrity is important. Even when you've got a terrible pandemic, people might have a right under the religion clauses to say, no, keep your hands off my body. But there will be one group of people who are subject to a very different regime, who can be told that their bodies can be conscripted to remain involuntarily pregnant. And one of the most astonishing moments in the argument today 
occurred when Justice Barrett said, essentially, I'm paraphrasing her, essentially, it's not that big a deal if women are forced to be pregnant and remain pregnant. After all, they could have used contraception, and if that doesn't work, well, all they have to do is leave their baby at the, you know, at the front steps of, of, a, of an adoption agency because all 50 states have safe haven laws and nobody then has to be an involuntary parent. You know, it made me think of Sophie's Choice. The idea that women can be told it's really okay that we force you to remain pregnant because at the end you can just give up your baby. Nobody with any sensitivity could think that that is the meaning of liberty, dignity, equality, freedom. So today's argument, though it wasn't surprising where the court is going to come out, was important not only because of the devastating effect that what the court is about to do is going to have, not only for poor women, but really for the status of women throughout the country, but important because it will reverse for the first time the trend toward expanding rights, and fundamentally important because it will say that we can put up to a majority vote in each state the balance of competing rights, and important because it will bring into question not only the legitimacy of the Supreme Court, but the legitimacy and justice of our entire system of law and government. The stakes could not be higher.